Hello, my name is Michael Bates. I am an orthopedic surgeon specializing in hip and knee replacement. I practice at Ortho Carolina in our university city location. So there are many reasons that folks come to see orthopedic surgeons and one of the most common reasons is hip pain. There are many reasons you can have hip pain, but the most common that I see in my practice is due to arthritis of the hip, specifically osteoarthritis of the hip. Arthritis of the hip is a condition where the substance known as cartilage is deficient. Here is an example of the hip. Typically, the ball of the hip, known as the femoral head, has a substance on it called cartilage. The same substance is on the inside of the acetabulum. So when the hip moves, that coating prevents it from having pain. Now, if you are missing that coating for any reason, whether it be wear and tear, which is what osteoarthritis is, then as that ball moves in the socket, it becomes very painful. People usually experience this pain in their groin area. Sometimes we will have patients present complaining only of knee pain. However, the problem is actually in their hip. And we can figure this out with x-rays, but it can be really surprising for an individual when their knee has been hurting them for months. We take an x-ray of their knee and it looks perfectly fine. Next, we'll do our physical exam. And typically, if the hip motion causes their knee to hurt, we'll then get x-rays of the hip and sometimes we'll be surprised at just how much arthritis the individual has. If you have a little bit of subtle pain when you walk two to three miles per day, you probably have some time before you have to think about surgery. But on the other hand, if you can't play with your grandkids, if you can't get dressed in the morning without someone having to tie your shoes for you, that's when the hip arthritis is becoming more disruptive to your life, and it's much more reasonable to consider a significant decision like hip replacement. Commonly on the initial office visit, we will review x-rays with you and we'll show you arthritis if there is some there. So, a few things that we'll do on the examination to try to confirm whether or not the issue is coming from your hip. Can you raise your right knee in the air and hold it up even if I push down on it? And when I push down, does that give you the pain again? What we're doing there is we're putting a lot of pressure right there on that ball and socket, which is why it's reproducing the pain. Another thing we notice with hip arthritis is people lose their motion. Typically, you'll have at least 30 or 40 degrees of rotation this way, and even more this direction. Now, this hip will probably have less because I'm suspecting there's arthritis there. That's about as far as I can get this hip, and it's probably starting to give you a little bit of pain right there. What I would recommend we do is take some x-rays so we can evaluate the hip joint, and then we can look at those together. And we commonly will see where the joint space between the ball and the socket has gotten narrowed, or in some places is no longer there. If that's the case, we'll usually make the diagnosis of arthritis of the hip. And we determine the severity based on how much of that joint space is remaining. If you've ever heard people say bone on bone arthritis, that means there's no joint space remaining. The bones are actually touching each other. But we can make that determination by looking at the x-ray. Now again, there are multiple ways that you treat osteoarthritis of the hip. We try to start with conservative measures first, but it's based upon the severity of the symptoms. Physical therapy can be effective for people. If we don't see severe arthritis, which you may hear some people refer to as bone-on-bone -bone arthritis, that's typically where we're gonna start. If that's not sufficient, then typically we'll add medicines to the plan, such as anti-inflammatory medications, as long as you're able to take those. The next step, sometimes we can consider an injection in specific scenarios. And in other folks, if the pain is really severe and we've been unable to make good progress with more conservative measures, we will talk to the individual about surgical treatment. That's hip replacement. During the surgery, we remove the femoral head right about here. This is taken off, and then we use a prosthesis which slides down the inside of the femur bone, and it replaces the ball here. On the other half of the hip, the acetabulum, you already have a socket, so what we do is put another socket inside of yours. So at the end of the surgery, we replace two painful surfaces with two new prosthetic surfaces. Typically, we try to have you up, out of bed, walking around, not within days of surgery, but within hours of surgery. Two to three hours is fairly typical. After you get home, you can shower within one to two days of surgery. We use special water-resistant dressings to make that easier. We may limit your return to athletic endeavors for several weeks after surgery, but things like walking are completely fine to do right away. Now, when it comes to knee replacement or knee arthroplasty, 
There's two common variations. There's total knee replacement and partial knee replacement. Now in the hip, there is a such thing as partial hip replacement, which we call hemiarthroplasty. However, for the typical person who has osteoarthritis, the treatment is total hip replacement. Typically partial hip replacement or hemiarthroplasty is reserved for folks who have a hip fracture not the standard reason a person's gonna be coming into the orthopedic surgeon's office. So another common question I get is how long will the implant last? Years ago, we used to tell people 15 years or 20 years. Fortunately, in the past 15 years or so, there have been some significant changes in how the components of hip replacement are produced. And that has led them to be dramatically more resistant to wear and tear. Therefore, we don't really worry about these hip replacements wearing out nearly as much as we used to. I have complete confidence when I tell patients we expect you to get much more than 20 years. For that reason, we now offer hip replacements to younger patients. We used to be concerned if a person was in their 40s or their 50s with a hip replacement because if it lasted 20 years, when they were 60 or 70, they had to have another surgery. That's much less common uh, a concern these days because the implants are so much better. That has opened up this surgery to younger patients who have severe arthritis, and we can do so without them having to be so concerned about having to have multiple surgeries later on. So the bottom line is if you have pain that's concerning you, don't ignore it. Basic x-rays are easy to get. We can give a lot of information pretty quickly and hopefully just reassure you. But if there is something more going on, we can provide you with answers and options.